Welcome, everybody. It is Tuesday, April 21st, and we got a lot to talk about after I was ready to go to bed last night and see what President Trump tweets. He ruined everybody's life in two sentence tweet, but it's not as not as bad as everyone went crazy with last night. We're going to try to break it down as best as I know it at this very moment. You know, obviously, everything's changed many, many times. He hasn't even really announced yet. Maybe during his, you know, coronavirus, uh, um, you know, update, he'll talk more about it. But he hasn't actually signed an executive order. If anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, last night at around 11 p.m. or so, right when everybody was ready to get to bed, uh, Donald Trump just wrote out a tweet. He said, "Oh yeah, and by the way, just you know, just feel like writing a tweet. By the way, no more immigration to America. End of story." And everyone's like, what? Huh? That's crazy. So um, this morning, business groups went crazy, went crazy. Immigration groups went crazy. Democrats went crazy on Trump, you know, because really he's using this crisis that we have right now, this coronavirus crisis to really change rules because this is what he campaigned on three and a half years ago. For the most part, as of right now today, as of right now today, there's no immigration to America anyway. Planes are not flying, embassies are closed. So for all intensive purposes, Donald Trump's tweet last night was just inflammatory, just to inflame tensions, because the reality is on the ground, Embassies are closed. Immigration is closed till May 2nd. We have a ban from Europe. We have a ban from Canada. We have a ban from Mexico. We have a ban from China. Planes are not flying. They're all, they're all parked in the desert somewhere. So, um, you know, what he announced is already what is happening. What we believed was going to happen, certainly the immigration lawyers, is that once the coronavirus, we came back to the back end of the, of the curve of, on the coronavirus, that... They would open up travel from Europe. They would open up travel from Canada and Mexico. And I don't know about China, but, but certainly parts of the world that, that have reduced their coronavirus. And uh, Donald Trump, because he thinks he's the king, he decides, he decides that I'm just going to stop immigration from everywhere. Now, he's not the king. We had a, we had a revolution from the British 200 and I don't know, 250 years ago, 240 years ago, whatever it was. Uh, so we don't get ruled by a king. The way we get ruled, Bon, so you understand what Donald Trump can and can't do. The way we rule and the way we make laws in America is that Congress, the House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate passes a law. And they pass the law that says you can get married to a U.S. citizen and sponsor them, immediate relative. You, as a permanent resident, can sponsor your permanent resident spouse. You're in the F2A. You can, uh, as a permanent resident, sponsor your unmarried children uh, over 21 who, uh, as a permanent resident, that's the F2B category, the F3, married children, and so on and so on. And the president's job is to run the Department of Homeland Security and enforce the laws that Congress has passed. 
Now, one of the laws that Congress has passed is that you are inadmissible to the United States of America under one of one of two one of two scenarios. One one scenario would be you you are a health hazard to America. You have a communicable disease. And the second one is if you are coming uh, to work uh, at, with a job offer and you did not get sponsored in a job and proved that you're not taking a job away from an American worker. Those are two different processes that at this moment, Donald Trump in his tweet last night says, we're going to stop. We're going to stop all employment-based job sponsorships. We're going to stop all family sponsorships. And I presume, because he hasn't said how he's going to do it, let's talk about family-based first. I presume he's going to do it based on family-based, and he's going to say that every person, yeah, that's right, that, that face we just saw, oh my God, it makes me want to vomit, that, that every person, that every person who's coming into the United States of America has a communicable disease. And he just now has made a blanket assumption that every human being who walks into America, gets on a plane to America, immigrates to America, has a communicable disease. Now, part of the process of getting a green card, which everybody knows, is you go to a medical doctor before you go to your interview. And you prove by taking a test at a medical doctor that you do not have a communicable disease. There are plenty of people who are immigrating to the United States who have coronavirus. There are also plenty of people who don't. And as far as I see it, as far as how Donald Trump can enforce the law, he can enforce the law and say people who with coronavirus can't come to America. And people, but he can't say, I'm going to presume that every human being has coronavirus and therefore there is no immigration because that's what his tweet was last night. Now about 15, 20 minutes ago before I got on the air, the New York Times was reporting, the New York Times was reporting that um, he is going to make exceptions to his blanket, I'm going to stop immigration. What are those exceptions? Well, if you already have a visa, you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to uh, renew it. Which visas you can renew, I'm not sure. Two, if you are married to a US citizen or your children are US citizens, I mean, or your children are U.S. citizens and sponsoring you, or you want to sponsor your children, your immediate relative, you will be able to con con continue those cases. The case, if you are on an H-1B, you will be able to get an H-1B. You'll be able to renew your H-1B. If you're on an O, you'll be able to do that as well. All the work visas, all the non-immigrant work visas, all the people in the tech business, technology business will be able to renew their visas. That's what the New York Times is reporting, although... We don't know what ultimately is going to be. What he is going to stop, based on what the New York Times is reporting, is for the next 120 days, he is going to stop the F2A category, the F2B category, the F3 category, the F4 category, and all the employment-based categories, which would be your, your, um, your EB1s, your EB2s, your EB3s, your, um, your religious workers, and perhaps even your investor visas. That's what the New York Times is reporting. We don't know. But assuming it's going to be something like that, two things. Number one, right now it's only 120 days. Number two, if the basis in which Donald Trump is deciding to end immigration for certain categories, but not end it for others. He can't change the law. He can only enforce the law. Remember that. So we have to, how is he enforced the law that says these people in these categories have coronavirus. So I'm now going to, I'm going to say all of these people can't come to America. But if you're married to a U.S. citizen or you're the child of a U.S. citizen, you don't have coronavirus. You can come. How, how is that even, how is that even um, fair? It's not. It's not. That's what's called an abuse of power. And my opinion, 
You know, what do I know? I'm just a Uncle Brad, the immigration lawyer, but I, I think I know a lot. My opinion is that when this executive order comes down and it's something like what is being described in the New York Times, he's already shown how he's discriminating against certain groups versus other groups without having a rational basis for it. So my guess is that when this does come out, and maybe it's coming out as we speak now, I don't know, but when it does come out, there will be a lawsuit, there will be an injunction, and we'll be back to where we are right now. Now, if the executive order is simply for 120 days, by the time they get to a court, it'll all be over anyway. So nothing would happen. If this executive order is not temporary and it's a longer period of time, then I think it's even going to be harder for Donald Trump to justify what he's doing. Think about it. If he says, I'm going to make an, a temporary order for 120 days, somebody's going to go to court and sue him. By the time the, the judge decides this, we're 120 days are it. So I think right now, this is all a political ploy, a political ploy by Donald Trump to to enrage his base, his right wing base of people, to let them know that he's doing things racist, anti-immigrant, anti-minority. He's doing these things so he can get those people to come out and vote for him. Because right now, those people are very angry at Donald Trump for closing down the economy. We saw them protesting this past weekend on the steps in Michigan. We saw them not social distancing. And what we saw Donald Trump do right after, right after he had a press conference with all his health officials, Fauci and Bricks and I don't know, whoever else is there, uh, the Surgeon General, whatever his name is, I forgot. Um, Social distance. We're not done yet. We got to we gotta open up the economy. We'll open it up when science tells us to open it up. And then two hours later, two hours later, he's, he's tweeting, you know, people have cabin fever. Go protest. Let's open up this economy. He was basically telling people it's okay to go protest. It's okay to go protest and not social distance because he was losing his base. And he needs his base to be reelected. Other than that, he, will, he, he has nothing going for him because he only has about 35% of the country who support him. So his goal is to, is to make sure people don't go out and vote. But his 35% of the people who, who are rabid Trump supporters do go out to vote. That's how we won the election last time. So I think it's all political. He's playing with people's lives. And I think, for lack of a better word, completely messed up. With that said, I'm going to say a little more about it in a little bit. But the most important thing that everyone has to take from this is if it is in fact, if it is in fact a short-term thing, there will be a lawsuit before, before it'll be over before the judge, before the judge decides on it. If it's a longer term thing, he makes he makes the lawsuit against him more difficult to defend. And ultimately it is apparent that if you're trying to protect the American public from coronavirus, you can't pick and choose which categories of people are allowed into America and which don't. Are you telling me H-1B people don't have coronavirus, but F-4 brothers and sisters do? Doesn't make any sense to me. With that said, let me say hello to Carol Anderson, the Tiger Squad Up, Nicole Brown Bell, uh, uh, Marlene Watt Russell, squat up. Katie and Plunkett, how are you? Jessica Kalimi, Gianna JS. Does the F1 visa get affected? We don't know yet. We don't know what will or what won't. We don't know yet. I will know more tomorrow because presumably he will be signing it. I'm giving you my um, pregame, my pregame response to what's going on. You know the pregame of you know you go and you know you hang out and party a little bit before the football game or the basketball game starts. This is the pregame. We're hanging out and talking about it, but we don't know what the game's going to be yet. Tomorrow, I'll tell you what the game is. Um, Marcia McCollis, squad up. How are you? Latoya, his forever Peterson. But I will say this. 
If there was ever a time in the history of the United States of America where somebody says to themselves, hmm, I wonder if I need a lawyer. Hmm, do you think I could do this by myself? Hmm, oh, this is just a form I need to fill out. Well, you know what? Get, get your head out of your tukus. Tukus means your ass in Jewish language because there is a war going on, a literal war between the right-wing establishment that Donald Trump is trying, that Donald Trump is trying to, um, to engage, enrage, to keep his support so he can get reelected again, and the rest of America who wants a more real, rational policy. And, um, and the only difference between, the only difference between them getting their way and not is good lawyers fighting in court to, because we have a constitution in the United States and we have civil rights in the United States and we have separation of power in the United States, which means that there is a Congress in the United States that has a say in what happens with immigration. And there is a president that has a say and there are judges who have a say. And we do not have a monarchy. This is not a, a, a king. This is a democracy. Jilly Gould, how are you? How you doing? Marlene Watt, Russell, what's going on? Odin Gibbons Adams. Um, can immigration give out a naturalization certificate without a ceremony? You got to be sworn in. So somehow they got to swear you in. Maybe they'll do it by Zoom for all I know. But you got to be sworn in. Princess Dyer, how are you? Nicola Wright, what's going on? Gina Hercules, squad up. Karen Brown, Av. Uh, Bosetti, Aboya, Old Denobo. Uh, the hopes the stimulus check will not be termed public charge. It will not. It's not a public charge thing. Uh, the reason is, is because a stimulus check can be given to someone who makes $150,000 a year. So it can't be. Donna Horton on YouTube. What's going on? 29 Super C. How are you? Diane Wright, Fiano Campbell. What's going on? Ja Love. Haven't seen you in the comments in a little bit, Ja Love. Goldomo Omo. What's going on? And back it up, Ricky, saying good afternoon, everybody. Tracy Lacey, Lady Leah, squad up to you as well. Uh, Fox Racing, he has a lot of conspiracy theories, Fox Racing. We'll read them later. Uh, Gervonti, the smart kid, Stewart, with a question. We will get to you in a little bit. Um, and with that said, we do have to do – oh, let me tell you this also. This is important to share, guys. If there was ever a time that people need to know real information, hashtag true information, hashtag I ain't bullshitting you information, this is what's going on, now is the day you need it. Now is the day you need to share this with your friends and family. So please share this with your friends and family. It's not even a joke anymore. I'm not even making, I'm not even making light of sharing and, and, um, and FaceTime. Um, you know, a lot of times I make light of it. Come on, guys, you're not sharing. Come on, you're not giving me a thumb. You know, I'm not making light of this right now. This is some serious, serious stuff that's going on. Okay. Serious, serious stuff. And you need to get the right information to people so they know how to live. Can you imagine the amount of people with anxiety going on right now who are going crazed? How am I going to be reunited with my spouse? How am I going to get to America? If anything was ever more important right now than getting proper information and knowing your rights, today's the day. Tomorrow, even more important. Thursday, even more important than Wednesday. With that said, uh, we got to schmooze a little bit too. So let's see what else uh, is going on in the world. Um, coronavirus statistics. Oh, by the way, before I, before I go into the schmooze, I do have to remind everybody, even though my law office is not uh, allowed to meet in person, uh, we are doing, I've do, been doing phone consultations all day by the phone. Uh, one of my partners, Shannon, who's fabulous, has been doing it too. The telephone number to call my office if you do need help is 1-800-529-5465. That's one 800 Five two nine five four six five one eight zero zero 
Five two nine five four six five. That's one eight hundred Law Link. Um, and if you're outside of the United States, it's plus one two one two 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 seven eight nine three three. Well, now COVID, they've infected more than two and a half million people. They've killed one hundred and seventy four thousand people. This virus worldwide. It has decimated the world. It has put us upside down in a matter of weeks. Now, Governor Andrew Cuomo here in our home state, Sparn Bernstein, Bradshaw Live home state of New York, our governor reported another 481 coronavirus-related deaths in New York today, with 29 of those in nursing homes. It was the lowest single-day toll in two weeks. The total number of deaths statewide is now over 14,340, but well below the 100,000 that we thought was going to be even a month ago. Now, Cuomo reported that statewide hospitalizations are relatively flat, ICU hospitalizations are down, and he said in a press conference earlier today that the current question now is assuming we are seeing a descent off the plateau. The question is, how long is this descent and how steep is this, 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 this descent? Excuse me, tongue tied. That's what we are trying to figure out. The number of people in the hospital have also dropped for six straight days. Now, Cuomo is now talking about opening up parts of New York. I assume the parts that he's going to open up first will not include New York City, Westchester, Rockland, or Erie, or, or Long Island, the hard-hit counties. They're going to open up you know, northern New York first. They're also going to start allowing elective surgeries in northern New York, uh, but not in the down, down state hospitals, not as of yet. He was going to meet with Donald Trump at the White House. I don't know if that meeting happened or not yet. Uh, and the, uh, the agenda for that meeting is tested. Now, Donald Trump is saying, Donald Trump is saying it's up to the state to test. Each state has to do their own testing. And Cuomo says, we'll do our own testing, but we need the federal government to assist with the international supply chain that states cannot get materials and they cannot get supplies from other countries without the help of the federal government. That's where Trump needs to step up his game, not with the stupid immigration tweets. That's where he needs to step up his game because once we're able to test on a wide scale, and I hope that day is coming in weeks and not months, I really do. Once we're able to test on a wide scale, we're going to know two things. One, who's sick with coronavirus? If you're sick, you stay home. Two, who already had coronavirus? If you already had it, the presumption is you can't get it again for at least a few months or maybe a year, maybe longer. Meanwhile, um, you know, some of the responses, some of the responses to Trump's tweet last night, some of the responses to Trump's tweet last night uh, came One came from uh, Representative Joaquin Castro, and he tweeted back after Trump said, I'm going to end the immigration thing. This action is not only an attempt to divert attention away from Trump's failure to stop the spread of the coronavirus and save lives, but it's an authoritarian-like move to take advantage of a crisis and advance his anti-immigrant agenda. We must come together to reject his division, which is exactly what I said at the top of the show. Um, Representative Jerry Nadler tweeted, President Trump now seeks to distract us from his fumbled COVID-19 response by trying to put the blame on immigrants. The truth is many immigrants are on our front lines protecting us as doctors, nurses, health aides, farm workers, and restaurant workers. I don't know if so much that he's trying to put the blame on immigrants, but what he is trying to do is just be a racist and stop immigration from coming and using this coronavirus crisis as a reason to stop immigration. It won't happen. It can't happen. Trust me. But you need really good lawyers. In an ironic twist with all this going on, today is Holocaust Remembrance Day. In Hebrew, Holocaust Remembrance Day is called Yam HaShoah. The internationally recognized date for Holocaust Remembrance Day corresponds to the 27th day of Nisan on the Hebrew calendar. It marks the anniversary of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. Uh, the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising was the 1943 act of Jewish resistance in the Warsaw Ghetto when the Germans came to deport them to the uh, concentration camps. And in that uprising, which lasted 
about two weeks, more than 13,000 Jews died in revolt. They didn't even make it out of the ghetto. I mean, it was a basic war between Germans with rifles and military equipment and Jews who had rocks and fists. Um, be that as it may, what is a perfect example of why America needs to be a shining light of liberty and justice and, and tolerance and immigration is that my great grandparents immigrated from Poland at some point in time in the early 1900s. Had they not immigrated, they would have been maybe in the Warsaw Ghetto. Maybe they would have been somewhere in Poland, but whatever, wherever they were in Poland, if they stayed and didn't immigrate, I wouldn't be here today. I would never have even been born. Uh, in New York, this is some good news for immigrants. Regardless of your immigration status, um, you are now included in citywide COVID-19 response and relief efforts. Mayor Bill de Blasio announced a $20 million fund that will assist 20,000 immigrant workers and their families with direct one-time emergency relief. Last week, stimulus checks from the federal government were sent out to U.S. citizens. This does not account for the 7.6 million Americans who are undocumented uh, or the 4.3 million of whom pay taxes using a taxpayer identification number. So Mayor de Blasio teamed up with billionaire George Soros, whose organization Open Society Foundations. They're going to be funding this $20 million relief aid. So the aid is being given out by New York City, but it's not being funded by the New York City taxpayer. It's being funded by billionaire George Soros. The mayor's office of, and by the way, George Soros is Soros also a, um, a survivor uh, of the Holocaust. The mayor's office of immigrant affairs and the mayor's fund to advance New York City will be creating a network of community-based organizations that will provide relief to families. So this is how it's gonna work. If you're undocumented or you, um, or you pay taxes with a taxpayer ID, you're getting $400 individual, $800 for a couple, $1,000 for a family with multiple adults and children. Um, according to the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs, there are over 127,000 undocumented immigrants just in Brooklyn alone, which is why I seem to be extraordinarily busy these days. Now Schumer uh, claims he reached a deal on major parts of a $500 billion virus aid relief bill. Um, he announced the agreement this morning and Trump tweeted his support hours later. Uh, he wrote, I urge the Senate and House to pass the Paycheck Protection Program. It's gonna fund more money for small business. Um, an additional, most of the 300 billion is going to small business payroll, but an additional 75 billion would be given to hospitals. 25 billion would be spent to boost testing for the virus. Um, in other odd news, before we get to our immigration questions, the United States is moderate, mod I mean, it's just world gets crazier and crazier every day. The U.S. is monitoring intelligence that North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is gravely ill and could die. His last appearance in the North Korean media was on April 11th. April 15th, North Korea's most important holiday, the anniversary of the birth of the country's founding father, came and went without any official mention of his movement. Do you think he has coronavirus? I don't know. But that's weird that on like the their biggest day of the year, this is like their this is like their Christmas, their New Year's Day. The biggest day of the year, guy disappears. Now the Daily NK, an online uh, based newspaper in South Korea that focuses on North Korea, reported that Karim Kim reportedly received a cardiovascular system procedure on April 12th because of excessive smoking, obesity, and overwork, and is now receiving treatment in a countryside villa. That also makes sense. He's a big fat guy who has absolutely no control over what he eats and he smokes and probably doesn't work out in any way, shape or form. With that being said, I think we gotta get to our immigration questions. We're about 30 minutes into this. I have more schmooze, but I think we gotta get into our immigration questions and something we like to call getting answers to your immigration questions. All right, so the first question on Facebook, by the way, 
the Facebook questions, they disappear after a while. So if you left a, if you left a question and I don't get to it, say it again, because it disappears sometimes on my feed. Um, Mommy Efu Baidu on Facebook wants to know, squat up, when will immigration open for a personal interview? Uh, they say May 2nd. Let's hope that that is the case. And by the way, when Donald Trump says he's ending immigration, anyone who's adjusting their status will still be able to adjust their status. It's immigration at embassies in another country. Um, Onefa Thomas, when will I get my check since I did not get a direct deposit? Well, I happen to have with me in my hand the Magic 8 Ball, and I'm going to ask the Magic 8 Ball, Onefa, when the mailman is going to deliver you your check, because that's the only per that's the only way I would know. When will Onefa get his check from the, uh, from the uh, mailman for, for his stimulus check? Uh, it says, without a doubt, you'll get it, but doesn't know when. How would I know when the mailman is going to give it to you? Assume it's mailed out and assume you'll get another week or two. Let's hope it happens. Um, Muhammad Rabu Abukari, can you remove the conditions from a permanent resident earlier than three months to the due date? No, you have to file the I-751 uh, within 90 days of uh, the expiration of your card. If you file beforehand, it'll be denied. Uh, Doris Dennis, Trump having a dementia. That's the least, I, I, that's probably true, but we got more problems than his dementia. Um, Lynn Schumacher Sweezy. Lynn, whoa, got that off. Okay. Lynn Schumacher Sweezy, shame on our president. I heard the news this morning and I just wanted to tell you how grateful I am that you're explaining things to everyone. Please run for president, Uncle Brad. Uncle Brad for president. Nah, what do I need that for? I, I like helping people. Um, I thought about it for a second, but nah. Uh, Angela Barrett, uh, Brad, I have a question. My dad is he, uh, here visiting, and his time will be up on May 7th, but the shutdown, he can't get home. What's going to happen with his visa? He needs to file an extension. Just because his I-94 is up on May 7th and he can't make it home doesn't mean he sits on, he sits on his hands and does nothing. He needs to file an I-539 application. Someone has to give him an affidavit of support on the easy affidavit of support application, which is the I-134 application and or the I-131, so I-131 or I-134. Uh, <clears throat> and you need a plane ticket for him to go home sometime in August, September, October. Make sure that you file the I-539 before May 7th or he's gonna stay here illegally, which you don't want to do. And then his visa will not get renewed when he goes back home. So you want him to keep his visa so he can travel at a future date. Immigration understands he can't make it home. Get that I-539 in. If you're not sure how to do it, you obviously give me a call, 1-800-529-5465. That's 1-800-529-5465. Demore Romet has a question. The I-130 was approved. I filed one year before, and the I-45 is presently in process. Number one, what is my priority date for the I-45? Is it the priority date for the I-130 or the receipt date for the I-45? It's the receipt date for the I-45. I would like to calculate the processing time for my EAD using my priority date. It is the receipt date for the I-45. Bosetti Abio Old Decimbo. Can someone who got Social Security and an EAD card this year, is he entitled to the stimulus check? Yes. If you got a Social Security card, there's no way in the world they're going to know what your status is as long as you filed a tax return with that Social Security number. Uh, also wants to know, same gentleman or lady, I'm not sure who it is. In preparing for a green card interview, which seems better to have as a couple, life insurance or health insurance? Match capable. What's better, life insurance or health insurance? Without a doubt, health insurance, because you, the health insurance shows not only that you have a real marriage together, but also helps you with the poverty guidelines as well. But get life insurance too. Um, Ashborn Liebert, how do we get some of the fund that's funded by the millionaire? Uh, we, you have to go to New York City and uh, maybe we will post something on our social media. I don't have the exact information where to go, 
but I am sure that uh, they will get out that information to you. Uh, Mintu Saab, question, my VAWA is pending 25 months. I didn't get anything. I got divorced 17 months ago. Will that affect my case? No, as long as your VAWA case was filed within two years of a divorce, you're absolutely fine. Nana Arafe Danuka. Hi, uncle. I am a U.S. citizen. I filed for my eight-year-old son living with me in the United States. He had the I-130 is approved. What's next after the I-130 approval, and when does he get his green card? You, if he's here in the United States, you got to file an adjustment application for him. Okay, so file an I-45 as long as he made a legal entry into the U.S. Um, Cuccio Tia. Hey, Uncle Brad, I filed for the I-360 and got a prima facie determination. My question is, if my application is approved, can I get married before filing for a green card or should I wait for my green card to get married? Um, you can get married before you get your green card, but um, it's not going to affect your VAWA case for sure. You can absolutely get married beforehand. Get married when you feel like it. They call me Cali as a question. Hi, Brad. Does Trump's new bill mean that the new applications will not be processed by USCIS? Excellent question. We don't know the answer to that. We'll know more tomorrow. Ahmad Maranjat, how much duration since case is ready to be scheduled for I-45 F2A category in New Jersey filed in September 2019? How much duration since case is, is ready to be scheduled for I-45? Well, I-45 is adjustment of four interviews at the U.S. Embassy. I'm not sure what you mean by duration. Uh, I'm not sure where you filed anything. So please be more clear on what your question is. I, I don't know the answer to I don't know what you're what you're asking me. Mintu Saab, question. My vow is pending 25 months. I think, okay, I answered that one. Marley Baldy, my husband lost his traveling document when he first entered the country 14 years ago. How can I receive it? Why did he, he lost his passport that he came here on? You can, you can go, um, you can go online and Google um, I-94 replacement. You can do an I-102. You can do a FOIA. But if you go like I-94 um, entry replacement, something like that, Google, you can – the first thing that will come up is the, is, um, is uh, Department of Homeland Security's uh, website for you to check on exits and entries that happened in the last 10, 15 years. Zakir Hasidar. When would I work permit? My date is September 2019 for cancellation. We're getting some questions that even the Facebook to English translator has no idea. Uh, I guess the question become is my work permit's going to expire. Ah, oh, the Facebook translator is coming through for me. My work permit is going to expire on September 6, 2019. When should he refile again? Uh, about four months before, four and a half months before. Um, if I petition for my mother, do I have to have health insurance for her entering the USA? It would be very, very, very helpful. That's right. I sent for that magic eight ball to Moira Med. I said that we're getting too many calls and too many questions where only the magic eight ball, only the magic eight ball would know the answers. Uh, Shernet Chambers, my mom is in Jamaica 10 months now. What's going to happen if the airport does not reopen soon? Uh, eventually she'll have to go to the U.S. Embassy if she has a green card and apply for an SB1 visa and show it wasn't her purpose to remain out of the country for more than uh, six months. Let's go over to YouTube a little bit and let's see what's going on on YouTube. By the way, on YouTube, we have only 42 people who have given me a thumbs up. So uh, give me a thumbs up. That would be a nice thing to do. All right, so let's go to the questions on YouTube. Um, Derek, Uncle Brad, will I be able to get a fee waiver for my 10-year green card renewal due to loss of work? Yes. Um, as long as you're below the poverty level. It depends on what your taxes are. Um, Fox Racing, uh, New York State, especially upstate, has more cows than humans. They should open up the whole state, especially the five boroughs. Okay. Um, he is going against medical advice, Fox. Um, I'm, I'm not certainly in favor of that one. Um, let's see. Intermission. Hello, Brad. 
Great show. My passport is stamped 3 November 2018, but my I-94 is saying 4 November 2018. Which date do I put on the forms asking me date of last arrival? Whatever the true date was. So if you came on November 3rd, then you put November 3rd. One of those is wrong, but whatever the truth is, that's what you do. Tia Persaud, my question is, what about peoples in the U.S.? One of his stupid tweet making everyone panic attack. And am I so everyone is also in bad pores already with coronavirus, so help us God. It is about people who are adjusting in the United States will be able to continue to adjust their status. It's the people who are not in the United States. That's what I believe. Moanika Salim. Hello, Brad. Question for the adoption of an orphan from another country in the United States. Must one use a special international adoption attorney? And what does the process look like? Yes. You need to prove that the child is an orphan. You need to do a um, pre-adoption here in the United States, which involves involving social workers coming to your home and getting a judge to basically say, when this child comes to the United States, we, we feel confident that this is a good person to do uh, an adoption. And then you file the I-600 and then process the child to come here and then you complete the adoption. So yes, it's not something easy that you would do on your own. It's not just filling out a form. Telephone number to call me is 1-800-529-5465. That's 1-800-LAW-LINK, 1-800-529-5465. Voltage, 876. Am I allowed to drive using my Jamaica's driving license since I can't get to the driver's license because of COVID? You are not allowed to drive with a Jamaican driver's license if you are in the United States for more than 90 days. You are basically driving illegally without a license. No excuse because you can't get to the motor vehicles. Diane Wright. Hi, Brad. If I have a physical address and a post office box at the post office, do I need to give USCIS my post office box or the mail will go to the physical address? You can, there, you can give either address wherever you want to pick up your mail. That's perfectly fine. Danielle Cadalis. Hi, Brad. Is this ban also affect those who are waiting for appointments to be scheduled on the embassy level? It may very well be depending on who they are processing. If you are married to a U.S. citizen, the ban will be probably not affect you. But if you are a married son or daughter of a U.S. citizen, a brother or sister of a U.S. citizen, yes, it will affect you. Now they're saying again, it's gonna be 120 days. Maybe it'll be longer. Maybe it'll be extended past 120 days. We don't know. All I do know is that ultimately the president can't make these decisions. It'll be made by a Congress. And uh, I presume there'll be an injunction entered by a judge. Asser USA or Nasser USA on YouTube. Hi Brad, how are you my brother? Would you help me with a delayed case right now or do I have to wait until the coronavirus is over? Well, give me a call. The best way to give me a call is you call my office. It's 1-800-529-5465, 1-800-LAW-LINK. And you ask to be put on Uncle Brad's list. Uh, if you're a new client, you'll pay a consultation fee. We reduce the fees for coronavirus. It's now $150. I will call you. I call everybody on my list and we'll talk and we'll figure out if I can help you. Um, FIK, FIK. Hi, Brad. My case status says it's ready to be scheduled for an interview, but no work permit sent, although status says fingerprints were taken. Will USCIS send my work permit? I hope they will. Yes, I really do. Laser home spa. What, I wonder what they do. What does it mean if your I-130 was approved immediately after your green card interview, but your I-45 is still pending adjudication eight months after the interview? What that means is that they approved... I assume it's a marriage case. They approve that you're in a bona fide marriage with your spouse. What they have not approved is that you are eligible to get your green card. Just because you're, you're in a bona fide marriage with your spouse doesn't mean you're necessarily eligible to get your green card. You can be denied because you have a criminal record. You made a, a legal entry into America, a fraud, uh, health issues, public charge issues. So those are two different things. Let's go back to Facebook. Brian Lochin, my husband received his temporary green card in 2018 and was supposed to file for the I-751 90 days before July 30th, 2020. We have not been able to do so as all offices are closed due to the pandemic. Once open, we will proceed immediately. How will this uh, or can this affect the Senate? Absolutely. It's not an excuse because offices are closed. Um, you can A, call my office. We'll do it for you. B, uh, you can download the forms and do it yourself and mail it in. 
Just because office is closed doesn't mean you're now off the hook. Go do it. Uh, Sharon Wright, when can we start traveling? Magic April. Sharon Wright would like to travel, as I would as well, as most people. When will this coronavirus be over that it will be safe to travel? Uh, it says, the reply is hazy. Try again next week. Even the Magic 8-Ball doesn't know that yet. Moya Douglas, squat up, Uncle Brad. My husband filed for my kids. What is going to happen if his Immigration Act is passed? Kids are in Jamaica, filed in November 2019. If the kids are under 21, they should be okay. Again, we'll know a lot more tomorrow. Jean McHale Robinson. I am a green card holder, and I was in the process of filing for my kids over 21 in Jamaica. Should I go ahead and file and do my citizenship first? Do both. Uh, do both. Um, as long as they're unmarried. Alex Scott. I'm asylum pending removal process. I got married to a USA citizen this year. How long to approve the I-130 FD approval? Can you explain how to file the I-45 in court? Thank you, Mr. Brad, for protect immigrants. I wish you the best. You are the great lawyer. Thank you. Um, you have to file an I-130 visa petition first. Go on an interview, prove it's a bona fide marriage. As part of the I-130 visa process, you gotta request a bona fide marriage exemption because the presumption is that you got married to avoid deportation. After you get the I-130 approved, you go back to the judge and you ask the judge to recalendar the case so you can adjust your status because you haven't approved I-130. Generally, you need a lawyer to help you in those situations. Uh, Juliet Morris says, good evening, Uncle Brad, watching from Florida. Please stay safe. Thank you very much. Narisha Forbes, I'm 35. I am in the U.S. Can my dad petition for me? He's a U.S. citizen. What forms? It's an I-130. The answer is yes. Petition. Even if Trump says no. I would petition anyway. Aisha Dawkins, because it's not going to be forever. And all of the people he's saying not to not to process, they're on waiting lists anyway for years. What, it, I, what sadly it affects is the people who are waiting years legally in line to come to America. That's where it's sad is that people who legally waited in line to come to America and followed the rules and are ready to come to America, those people can't now which is kind of a joke when you hear all the Republicans say, we just want people to follow the rules. Well, they followed the rules and Trump effed them. Just my, just my thoughts. Aisha Dawkins, I filed a VAWA. I got a prima facie priority date November 2018, but I didn't apply for my I-45 because my husband was a green card holder. Do I file it anyway before the VAWA approval? If the priority date is current for VAWA, you can file it before the VAWA approval. So Assuming the F2A category is current, the answer is yes, you can file. Uh, Tishana Dixon, I got stuck here. I came here 22 of February. I was supposed to leave March 30th. What am I supposed to do? File for an extension. You file an I-539. Make sure you file it as quickly as possible before you fall out of status. Sam Yemen, hi, Brad. I have a delayed case. Would you help right now? The answer is yes. Call me 1-800-529-5465. Lavanda. Hi. Thank you for all you do. I filed an I-130 petition for my husband, who is Nigerian. I'm a United States citizen. The petition was filed in August 2019. We're currently on our eighth month. Will the Nigerian ban affect my petition? The Nigerian ban affects your petition. It absolutely does. There's bans everywhere with Trump. Um, hopefully, hopefully, despite these bans, they're accepting your application. And hopefully, by the time they process this application through, Joe Biden is our president. Ori Martin. Hi, Brad. I heard people have been issued traveling documents if the U.S. kids have been living here for 10 years. How true. I heard people. No, you don't get a travel document because you have a kid living here for 10 years. If you are in removal proceedings, one of the things you can do, and they want to deport you, that's why you're in removal proceedings, one of the things you can do is file for cancellation of removal. And in cancellation removal, if you've been here for more than 10 years and there would be an extreme and unusual hardship to your children and you can show good moral character, they would they would cancel your removal. That's why they call it cancellation or removal. And they would give you a green card. Is that what you're asking? Because there's no other thing that says you have a 10-year-old kid, you get a travel document. Brian Peterson. 
Hi, Uncle Brad. My wife filed form I-130 for me in June 2019. It doesn't approve yet. I live in Canada. How long do you think it's going to take to get approved? Uh, I don't know the answer to that, uh, but it's usually about nine to 12 months. Brahim Okafor, what a nice informative show that Brad provides. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Nika B. So close, family from another country won't be able to come, brother, spouse, etc., based on his tweet. Oh, so close family from another country won't be able to come. Like a, bro a brother will not be able to come, based on his tweet. Um, uh, married children won't be able to come. Spouses, presumably, will be able to come. Julianne Adrian N. Hello, Brad. I went for my green card. I went for my green card interview on April 2019, but I have not gotten any reply. How long does it take to get approved? Well, it shouldn't take a year. So if it's taken over a year, I think it's time to call Uncle Brad. 1-800-529-5465. Kenny Sang. Hi, Brad. I'm finally divorced. Woohoo! I filed a VAWA and I have a prima facie determination. Should I send them my divorce decree or should I wait until they ask? Wait until they ask. Never send any documents to immigration unless they ask for it. If you just start some randomly sending documents to immigration, it's never, ever going to hit your file. Uh, Sandra Salinas, asking fees. For a friend, how much to renew your 10-year permanent resident card, please, and thank you. Call me, Sandra. I don't give fees over my show. Ronald Singh. Hi, Brad. Someone has an EAD card based on a VAWA and another EAD card based on an I-45. Do them have to renew their C-31 EAD? No. As long as you have the EAD card based on the adjustment, which is the C-9, you do not need to renew the uh, work permit on the C-31, which is the VAWA. Uh, Delrica Bird. So my immigrant visa fees are paid. Appointment date pending. So now what? Good question. If it's through a U.S. citizen, don't worry. If it's your parent filing for you, you may be sweating it out for the next 120 days till we see what Trump does and the judges do. Uh, Evangelist Forrest, I'm stuck in Chicago. My time is up in July. Should I send for an extension now? Yes. Stargirl Mika says, I missed my question. I'm sorry, Stargirl. Send it again. Uh, Marley Blade, when you do biometric test, if you have marijuana in your system, will you be denied for adjustment status? I have never heard of uh, marijuana. Um, marijuana, they take your fingerprint. I've never heard of taking a fingerprint and the fingerprint thing going buzz, 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 like it goes off, like you have mar How would they know from a fingerprint? So no, you would only be denied if you have marijuana in your system that, and there's a doctor who tests for it. Uh, does adjusting around what time of the day can we book a consultation, Uncle Brad? Um, I'm usually doing my consultations around starting around 12 or 11.30 or 12 o'clock New York time. Call my office. You schedule to be on my list. I get a list. The list is very long. And I basically start dialing from the top of the list to the bottom of the list. So you can tell my secretary, put me at the top if you want to be called earlier in the day. Put me at the bottom if you want to be called later. But I can't promise you the exact moment that I would be calling you. We just go. I just go on the list, first person, second person, third person. It's kind of how I do it. Um, Mike Williams, the asylum pending marries U.S. citizen. The green card interview was completed over 10 months ago, and the case is stuck on background checks. I contacted the ombudsman and the senator, but still response. Can I sue and when? Uh, you can sue in about two more months. 12 months, you can sue. Wait 60 more days. Um, Odin Gibbons Adams. How old does a kid have to be to gain citizenship status from parents? Well, the kid has to be alive, so at least one day old, and not more than 18. Um, Brian Lochin. This is Brian Lochin's wife now. I'm going to contact your office immediately. There it is. It's always the women. I always find the women are the directors in the family. They always, they're the ones who make the decision, the women. Way to go, Brian Lochin's wife. Certainly in my family too. So I'm, I'm even, I'm talking about myself too. Uh, Carrie Ann Burnside Clark, how long will it take for my husband to get to America? It's a very good question, Carrie Ann. I don't have the answer for you, uh, but these are the times when you need a good lawyer and then, and then we'll figure it out. 
Um, Zeneb Zendrenev. Me and my lawyer talked to immigration today via phone, and my lawyer asked the immigration about my EAD renewal, and my lawyer gave a notice, uh, an NOA renewal to immigration, but the immigration told us the receipt number to give to her, not match, and my lawyer, what happened? You sent the receipt, and she gave the MSC number to inquire, and the immigration answered 30 days. I'm under vows since 2018. <sighs> Zeneb, you can call immigration till the cows come home. You're talking to people who have no idea anything about your case. I've said that a million times already. Um, so... Makes you feel better calling, but not doing anything to move your case more than one second. London Jacques. Good evening, Uncle Brett. Excuse me. Good evening, Uncle Brett. My wife filed for my son March 2019, and he was 20 last December. His case was approved, but they requested further evidence, which I submitted. But my question is, he just got a baby born two days ago. Will that affect his filing? Um, my wife filed for my son. No, it won't affect his filing, but the baby won't be able to come with him. When he comes here, he'll have to turn around and file for the baby, assuming this Trump thing is over with already. Tiffany Bowen, can a spouse withdraw an I-130 that has been approved if they have proof of cheating? A spouse can withdraw an I-130 at any time with or without proof of cheating. As long as, but once the person gets their green card, nothing more you can do. KC Daniel. Hey, Brad, I used Mariana at your office in 2018. Everything worked out great. Fabulous. Now her visa is approved and I have a date to leave for Trinidad on May 11th. I sent an email asking to extend the visa because of the coronavirus. I booked a flight, but with the restrictions on borders, what can I do to prevent doing the process over? You need to call me because you have issues with coronavirus. You have issues with Donald Trump's um, with Donald Trump's, um, um, uh, ban. So we got to figure out this, that's not an easy answer at this moment. Rose Hines blessing. My question is my husband is a U.S. citizen. If he started filing the papers for me and my 16 year old daughter, she will be 17 this year. If he files the papers for this coming up summer month, will be okay before her next birthday next year. She'll be 18 the end of next year. I'm a little worried concerning time issues with my daughter. Perfectly fine, because all you got to prove is that the marriage happened before 18. That marriage happened, and your husband files for her before 21. So she is perfectly, perfectly fine. Um, Alan, Asgar Khan says, I missed the question two times. Uh, Asgar, I'm going back in my notes here, Asgar, just for you, who claims I missed twice. I missed the question twice. I don't see your question, Asgar. I'm looking very, very carefully for Asgar's question, who is very, very annoyed with me at this very, very moment because he asked the question twice and I missed it. Um, you know, Asgar, as a 25-year-old man, I had very good eyesight. But as a 51-year-old guy, my eyesight's going a little bit. Ask it one more time. I don't see it. Adi Carroll on Facebook. Hi, Brad. Can my son file for me with a green card? And how long if I'm married? Uh, if your son's a U.S. citizen, he can. Uh, but we have a Trump ban. So I think you're going to need to have a lawyer so we can figure this one out. Renata Costa. My K-1 process was approved and my interview is scheduled to July 7th. Do you think the K-1 visa will be banned? No, I think you'll be able to come. Um, Linda Shaw. It's quarantine. Now we need the number to, okay. She's just pushing people to follow us. All right. I'm going to answer two or three more questions. We're coming up on the hour now and pop-ups are only supposed to be an hour. Uh, Sheikh Shakur Kone. Hi, Brad. Me and wife play the DV, the diversity visa lottery. Um, in 2015 and one, when they went for an interview, they put my brother on administrative process and issued his wife a visa. When it came to the United States, she petitioned for her husband, and this time he went for an interview and put under administrative process again. What does she have to do to get her husband to the United States? I don't know. Well, obviously, there's an issue with this husband that they're looking at him a little more closely. So I would need to have a consultation with her and figure it out. And now also, and now also, um, you have a ban. Stargirl Mika, again, giving me a shake in my head. SMH it was right before that one. Where's, where are you, Stargirl? 
I don't see you, Stargirl. I'm sorry about that. I just don't see it. Janelli Marte Fontanilla. Uh, 601 inadmissible waiver, over processing time, no RFP. What's next step? Uh, follow up for it. It's about a year. It takes about a year. Uh, Pretty Malay. Hi, Brad. My dad filed a FOIA. Still haven't gotten a response. How long is the waiting process? About six, eight months right now. Carrie Ann Burnside Clark, I filed for my son's green card eight months ago. How long will it take for us to get it? I don't know if you're a citizen. I don't know if you're a resident. I don't know where your son lives. Need more information. Princess Dyer, Brad, I sent you a question. You don't give me the answer. A lot of people didn't get the answers today. I'm sorry about that. Um, on, on YouTube, Roddy Noel has a question. Hi, Brad. My brother went for a green card interview. It's been seven months. No decision made yet on his case, but his kids was case, but was the case too, but the interview not good. What do you think may happen to the kids? What? I don't even understand what you're asking. Mir Oteshev. Good day. I filed for VAWA, but it was denied because my signatures didn't match. Then I filed 29B on November 18. Notification received by now. Not yet. Meanwhile, my I-765 has expired. Mir, why don't you try again? File a new VAWA application. That's what you should do. Uh, don't appeal because your fingerprint, your signature doesn't match. A stupid decision. Just refile again, and and withdraw the appeal. Um, Jack wants to know: Can he go to another state to get married? Sure, as long as you get a license in that state. Why not? Uh, and finally, uh, Nikki Neeks Sutherland on Facebook: Can a mother citizen file for her 37-year-old son who has been separated from his wife for over 13 years? Wife left and started using a new name, but still married. Yes, you would be in the F3 category. It'll be a long time. Hopefully, your son will get a divorce from this lady and push him up to the F1, which will make it a lot, lot faster. All right. So everybody, I will be back tomorrow with more information about what's going on with this Donald Trump ban. Uh, we'll see exactly what he puts into effect. But if you have questions or concerns about what my thoughts are, go watch the beginning of this show. Also, it is incumbent upon everybody to understand and realize the situation that we're all in, which is you can't do this alone. This is getting crazy and you need good lawyers to protect your rights, to protect your, 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 your right to live in America. You have a right. It's called immigration laws. And they're being trampled on. And the only thing separating you from that right is immigration lawyers. You can call my office to have a consultation with me. The telephone number is 1-800-529-5465. That's 1-800-LAW-LINK, 1-800-529-5465, 1-800-LAW-LINK, 1-800-529-5465. You can get on my uh, list. You can also follow me at Real Brad Bernstein. If you follow me at Real Brad Bernstein, and I didn't get to answer your question, you can follow me, like a couple of my pictures if you want, and drop me a DM. I'll try to answer it as best as I can. You can also follow us at Brad Show Live. If you follow us at Brad Show Live and you find the post with the free consultation and you like that post and you tag five people, guess what? I may pull your name out of my raggedy old Uncle Brad hat tomorrow because tomorrow is free consultation day. Somebody wins it every Wednesday. But you gotta, you gotta follow at Bradshaw Live on Instagram. You gotta like the post that offers the free consultation, and you also have to uh, tag five people. If you're watching on YouTube right now and you do not subscribe, how silly of you! Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Nobody will be coming after you. I promise you, and you will be notified every time we come on. It's so easy to subscribe. So many people watch and not as many people subscribe. I, my guess is that they're scared to say, oh, I subscribe to Bradshaw Live. That means I have an immigration problem. Don't worry. It's fine. It's safe. And again, on Facebook, please like our page and follow our page as well so you get a notification every time we come on live. And everybody out there with an immigration problem, one thing I do know is that if you stick with me long enough, I... Eventually, we'll solve it. I do for most people. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. Maybe not next month. Maybe the laws are against us today, but they're for us next month. We'll get through it. 
and give me a call at my office if you need help. It's 1-800-529-5465, one 529 Five four six five. I do have to remind everybody that prior successful results do not guarantee a similar outcome in the future. Every day I've been entering the show, saying goodbye in a different language. I'm going to run out of languages I know, but I do know Slovakian. And in Slovakian, you say goodbye, you say ahoy. So ahoy, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.